It's like so much that there needs to be done. It's astounding to me that at this time, it's 2021, and it feels like we're in the 50s sometimes. Now at six, a Carmel woman on a mission to change Indiana's rape law after she was sexually assaulted in her own home. Stephanie Stewart says her attacker was not criminally charged. WRTV Investigates Carol Kenny spoke with lawmakers and survivor advocates who say a big problem is the current law. We do want to warn you the following story tonight may be disturbing to some of our viewers. Indiana rape law says the perpetrator has to use force or the threat of force. It can also be when the victim is unaware of what's happening or can't consent due to a disability. The problem, according to advocates, Indiana does not define what consent is. Stephanie Stewart is a mother of two living in Carmel. You can call her a mother on a mission. She writes emails daily to lawmakers, experts, and advocacy groups. You're kind of on this crusade now. Yeah, I really am. Stephanie says Indiana's rape law needs to change and define what consent is. But our laws don't cover that. Which is ridiculous. Stephanie says she was raped by a salesman who came to her home for a scheduled appointment in June 2019. We warn you, the details of the incident and aftermath are graphic. I believe he put something in my drink because the next thing I remember, I still have amnesia for most of the event, was him being naked in front of me and me pushing his chest as hard as I could saying, stop, stop, stop. And the next thing I remember is laying face down on my couch I couldn't speak, I couldn't move. Stephanie was confused and disoriented. I was just in shock, complete shock. Next morning, I went to my doctor's office. I called them first thing when they opened and they examined me. Records provided by the nurse practitioners say it was evident this was a non-consensual act. And I had bruises all over my body, on my hips. During the course of this, he had jammed a feminine hygiene product up inside of me so far that she had to pry it out of me after several tries. Stephanie went to the hospital for a full forensic exam, which also documented bruises. They have to get up close and personal photographs of you, like uh, scrape every inch of your body. I mean, it's, it's nothing anyone would go through unless they hadn't been assaulted, because who would put themselves through that? Carmel police came to her house and collected more evidence. Months later, she got a call from a survivor advocate. Bad news. She said that they were not going to prosecute. And I immediately just started sobbing because, you know, I don't, not one to cry, but that was just so shocking to me. And I was so devastated and disappointed. Stephanie says her toxicology report did not reveal anything out of the ordinary, and the salesman told police the sex was consensual. The facts of my case were so compelling. There was so much physical evidence of trauma that I, I just felt it was completely wrong. I would never consent to that, nor would I consent to being sodomized by a stranger. Haley Rigger with the Indiana Coalition to End Sexual Assault and Human Trafficking says part of the problem is Indiana does not define consent. It can be really challenging for prosecutors then to charge a case if uh, there's not clear evidence of threat of force or force. Um, it, it can be really challenging for prosecutors. So defining consent would provide another tool in the toolbox of prosecutors as they're addressing these cases. States like Colorado, California, Florida, Minnesota, and neighboring Illinois all define consent. So consent isn't just no means no, but consent is also yes means yes. So consent must be freely given. It can't be coerced or manipulated from someone. Indiana lawmaker Sharon Nagel is taking a step to changing Indiana's rape law. And my objective, of course, is to make sure that this time around we make it to the finish line. And I am there for the victims. She plans to refile House Bill 1176, which passed overwhelmingly in the House last year, but died in the Senate. The bill says rape is when a victim expresses a lack of consent, either through words or conduct. We know well enough that if an individual is, uh, you know, pulling their clothes back on, trying to avoid that type of uh, event, um, though that's by action. So incredibly important that it's not just a violent uh, approach, it also is by verbal and action. 
Stephanie Stewart created a Facebook group in support of Nagel's legislation and other changes to Indiana's rape law. Stephanie has healed physically, but is still trying to heal her mind from what happened. It's just, it's ridiculous what you have to go through. Stephanie hopes to help other survivors by organizing rallies and testifying in the upcoming legislative session. I'm trying to make a change and making it better. The deadline for filing legislation is early January 2022. We will be monitoring the bills filed and will bring you any updates on changes to Indiana's rape law. Working for you, Kara Kenny, WRTV. We reached out to the Indiana Prosecuting Attorneys Council for their input. They are the organization that represents prosecutors across the state. They told us they supported House Bill 1176 and said, quote, statutory language matters. And we have seen other states attempt to address these issues with language that has been less than successful. Representative Nagel's research resulted in a bill that would provide clear guidance for jurors in evaluating these cases. The Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office declined to explain its decision not to file charges in Stephanie Stewart's case. However, the office told us it supports the efforts of legislators legislators and survivors who tackle the issues of sexual assault in a meaningful way. The statistics are alarming. According to advocacy groups, one in five Hoosier women have been sexually assaulted. Nationally, two thirds of sexual assaults are never reported to the police. Out of 1,000 sexual assaults, 975 perpetrators will walk free. A new Indiana law helped Stephanie Stewart through the criminal justice process. The victim rights legislation passed in Indiana last session. It says every survivor in the state of Indiana has the right to an advocate. That means a victim of sexual assault can have a counselor present before and during a forensic medical exam, as well as interviews with police and attorneys. It's traumatizing and we know that and we don't want them to be alone. We want a victim advocate there with them. Representative Nagel plans to refile legislation aimed at closing another loophole in Indiana's rape law. It would make it a crime to commit rape by impersonation or pretending to be someone's consensual partner. Nagel drafted the bill after learning of a 2017 Lafayette case in which a man pretended to be the victim's boyfriend. The suspect was acquitted of rape.